Welcome to Trap Towns, the show where I take you to some of the best towns across America for trout fishing. Each episode, we'll travel to a new town to fish two specific trout streams, from freestone to limestone to tailwater and everything in between. We'll also highlight some of the great American history as well as architecture illustrated by the towns which we visit. All that and more today on Trap Towns. On this episode of Trout Towns, we're in Hancock, New York, just steps away from two of the most prolific tailwater fisheries in the entire eastern United States, nestled within the beautiful Catskills Mountains. Our first stop on this trip will be to the West Branch Delaware River, pound for pound, one of the best wild trout rivers east of the Mississippi. We'll then explore the East Branch Delaware River, another tailwater fishery which, when combined with the West Branch, form the mighty main stem Delaware River. While in town, we'll briefly highlight some of Hancock's rich historical past, gaining prominence via the introduction of railroads to the area as well as extractive industries like timber and stone quarrying, not to mention a close connection with Major League Baseball. Hancock has also been long known as a recreational mecca for fishermen and other outdoor pursuits, with numerous hotels and restaurants catering to visitors. So, please join me today as we fish, explore, and embrace our very next trout town in Hancock, New York. Hancock, New York, a town located in Delaware County on the outskirts of Catskill Park. This town is your gateway to the Upper Delaware as the east and west branches of the Delaware River converge at the base of Scenic Point Mountain. Both the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway and the federally designated Upper Delaware Scenic and Recreational River begin in the town of Hancock. The west and the east branches are two of the top tailwater wild trout fisheries in the entire eastern United States, and today the Delaware River and its tributaries are a significant draw for tourism in Hancock. Historically, this town was established in 1806, named for John Hancock, signer of the Declaration of Independence. Ever since the original Erie Railroad passenger train came through in the 1850s, Hancock has been noted for its local hotels and restaurants. In the past, the main industries of Hancock have been timber and stone. Hancock has been home to many hardwood mills with oak, maple, ash, cherry, and other fine hardwoods being sourced from this area and exported. The area is also known worldwide for its bluestone quarries. Hancock has been called the bluestone capital of the world. Many New York City landmarks contain Hancock bluestone, such as the Empire State Building and the base of the Statue of Liberty. Beyond its natural beauty, the town has also made several historic contributions to baseball, with baseball legend Eddie Murphy being born here. Also, the town was the original home of a mill operated by Hillerich and Bradsbury Co., the company that provided bats to Babe Ruth, Joe DiMaggio, Ty Cobb, and other baseball legends. Also historically significant, in the 1960s, New York Route 17 was designated the most scenic highway in America, with thousands of people traveling to Hancock each year to marvel at the autumn foliage. In addition to hunting and hiking, Hancock is well known for its maple syrup shipped all over the world. Today, Hancock has some of the finest fly fishing in the entire eastern United States, but also be sure to check out the hotels, motels, and restaurants in town. With that brief history provided, let's go fishing on the world-class West Branch Delaware River. All right, so maybe 10 or 15 minutes upstream of Hancock, New York, we are now on the west branch of the Delaware River. This is an ice cold tailwater fishery. One of the, probably the premier uh, large wild trout fisheries, specifically wild brown trout and wild rainbow trout in the entire Eastern United States. So really excited to get out here. I've only been here one or two other times. We are gonna start out by nymphing. It's about 10.30 a.m., a little bit overcast, quite cool. We had a temperature swing of about 15 degrees, much warmer yesterday, much cooler today. I'm hoping to do some dry fly fishing later, but for right now, we're gonna start out uh, nymphing. Um, we got some nice riffles here, quite shallow. May have to move up, move upstream a little ways, but uh, yeah, we're out here, really excited. Let's get started. So what I'm starting out with, because I don't think there's gonna be any fish rising till later this afternoon, starting off on the bottom with a small size white woolly bugger, hopefully imitating any bait fish. And I also have a medium sized pheasant tail, a little bit higher up, maybe about 12, 18 inches up. So nymphing with two nymphs, don't normally do that, but I figured this is big water, we gotta cover a lot of water here. So that's what we're starting out with. We'll just, uh, we'll just see what happens. It's very shallow in here. This is not prime water, but a lot of other fishermen out today. So we're just trying to fish any water we can, get a little space. So let's see what happens. Just got my first fish, looked like a rainbow. 
Looked like a rainbow. Try not to lose him. Oh! Oh, well, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. The current is quite strong in here, so this is not going to be the easiest thing in the world. Let's see if we can get him in the net. See if we can get him in the net. Oh, got him. All right, so we just got a solid, solid wild rainbow. Let's get the hook out of him, take a look at him. Awesome. All right, so within the first like five minutes, we got a gorgeous, probably 14, 15 inch, really nice wild rainbow trout. Let's take a look at him here. Hold on, bud, hold on, I'll get you out of here. Beautiful, really, really exquisite colors on these fish, the pink cheeks. Let's uh, let's get him right out of here, that's, that's nice. Hold on, bud, hold on. Ooh, beautiful fish. Ooh, beautiful fish. Let's get him out of here. Just got another one. Just got another one. This one does not feel quite as big. That's okay. That's A-OK. -okay. Oh, got him. All right, so a little bit smaller than the last one. That'll be a wild brown. That is back-to-back -back fish. Wonderful. Hit the white woolly bugger again. Or no, maybe hit the uh, maybe hit the pheasant tail. Let's see. All right, so although that last guy hit the white woolly bugger, this one hit the small print, uh, what's it called? I don't even remember what it's called, but beautiful fish. Absolutely beautiful. Let's get him right out of here. Let's get him right out of here. That's a sick fish. Let's get him out of here. Whew. All right, so we just got two back-to-back -back, uh, wild rainbow and wild brown trout super early on, literally within the first like five minutes. Very unexpected for me with my skill level. Anyways, uh, we got a drift boater and we got another fisherman up here on the left. I pushed up a couple hundred yards to get to some better water. He's much younger and faster than me, uh, so he's going to get to the prime water, but we're just going to see where we can get to on this side. Uh, good for him, though. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, hopefully we can get on some more fish. They hit the white woolly bugger and the pheasant tail. So it looks like we got the right stuff on.
Just got one. Just got a nice hookup. See if we can get him over here. He slapped it. down here looks like a nice rainbow I don't know if he hit the white woolly bugger or the pheasant tail but he's fighting Trying to body him over here, but he's like really pulling. Ooh, that actually might be a brown. That actually might be a brown. I think that's a nice brown. God, he really does not want to get in this net. Got him. All right, we got him. Woo! All right, that's that's a big fish. So we just got a solid like 18, 20 inch wild brown, legit like 20. Let's take a look at him. Absolutely beautiful fish. We're gonna get him right out of here. I mean, look at this fish. Absolutely beautiful. We're reviving him in the net. Gorgeous fish. Freaking huge. So let's get him right out of here. All right, we're going to get this big wild brown right out of here. Right out of here. Easily one of the biggest fish I've ever caught. This is a sick fish. Really sick fish, dude. Let's get him out of here. Get out of here, bud. Woo! -hoo -hoo. All right, so with about eight drift boats that way and six or seven other fishermen a couple drift boats this way and a couple other fishermen we're gonna call it a day here from the west branch this is actually the confluence where the west and the east branch meet up together and form the delaware river but um we're gonna call it a day from the west branch we got three one really solid uh large 18 to 20 inch wild brown trout we're gonna call it a day and go back to hancock as a relatively small river town nestled in the southwestern corner of the Catskills Park, Hancock is not necessarily known for its architecture. However, there are a few notable commercial brick buildings on the main thoroughfare. Also, a few religious buildings worth checking out on the edge of town. And a handful of well-preserved historic homes, as well as a superlative historic high school building. So, let's go on a brief architectural walking tour of Hancock, New York. And then, I promise, we'll get back to catching some nice trout.
right, so maybe 15 minutes upstream from Hancock, we are on the East Branch, Delaware River, another tailwater fishery similar to the West Branch. Um, not quite as productive, uh, doesn't stay quite as cold as the West Branch from what I understand, but still an excellent, excellent fishery. Um, we are gonna be fishing the section uh, above where the Beaver Kill River uh, dumps into the East Branch because my thought process is that the water up here will be significantly cooler. So let's get after it. We got fish rising all over the place. I'm just throwing out a little tan caddis. I don't know if that's what they're eating though because I haven't gotten any bites. I'm up to my waist in the water. Really want to figure out what these guys are eating so I can catch some fish. Just got a fish. Not sure what it is. Might be a wild rainbow. Feels pretty good. Eh, no, it's probably it's a little on the small side. That's okay. Hit the olive colored stimulator. I couldn't figure out what they were eating. So I said, let me just see if I can stimulate them a little bit here. What do you know? I think they're going after drakes of some kind, like a green drake. I saw some big drakes. And I never have green drakes because I'm a moron. Let's get him over here. Well, that's a brown. That's a brown. Nice medium sized brown. We'll take it. Play him that long. Let's get him over here. Got him. All right. So beautiful, probably nine, ten inch wild brown. Let's get the hook at him. Take a look at him. All right. Let's get a look at this fish. Not bad. Solid, solid fish. Hold on, but we'll get you out of here. Yeah, that's a solid. Fish. Oh, he almost popped out of my hands. That's okay. Stream bred wild brown trout. Beautiful colors on these wild fish. Yeah, that's a solid nine, ten inch fish. Let's get him right out of here. See you later, bud. See you later. All right, so we came upstream uh, quite a ways, probably about 10 miles upstream from where we were before. We just got to this beautiful, historic covered bridge. Always like to see great American history, so that's just that's just wonderful. Um, we haven't seen any fish rise for quite a while, so I did grab my nine foot five, I'm sorry, nine foot five weight, leaving behind my oh, eight foot six four weight. And I've never been to this section before. We got a little tributary trickling in. Um, and we're gonna try to nymph. I got a couple different nymphs on here. And we're just gonna see what happens. So coming just, I'd say maybe 10 miles upstream, closer to the reservoir, uh, where ice cold water dumps into the East Branch Delaware River. The water is much, much, much colder than it was even just 10 miles downstream, noticeably colder. Like in my waders during summer, which it is now, I can I can feel how cold it is. But that's okay, we do this for you. All right, so we just made it down to these riffles. They're much more shallow than I was hoping. Uh, haven't seen a fish rise in quite a while. Haven't gotten a single bite on any of the nymphs, nymphs we've been throwing. All right, so after not really catching anything for quite a while, we do have a nice set of riffles right here, slightly deeper water, shade because of the uh, ripar riparian buffer, great word, um, and these like sort of trees coming out. So right through that nice little slick section right there, a little bit bluer. We're just gonna see if there's anything lurking. Probably not. We have not felt the tug of a fish in quite a while and that's what you want you want to get that nice 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 hard tug and that's what we're looking for all right so we just got a fish looks like a trout feels like a trout that's great not huge not huge but we don't want to lose them not huge but we don't want to lose them we'll freaking take it Looks like he hit the Frenchie.
Get him over here. Not big. Not big. We'll take it though. That looks like a nice little wild brown town. Got him. All right. So got a nice little wild brown. Ooh, that's so wonderful. All right. Let's get the hook at him and take a look at him. All right. So we just got a pretty small. I mean, for the East Branch Delaware, this is definitely a smaller fish, but it's good to see these different age classes for sure. This is probably a, let's call him six or seven inch wild brown. Let's take a look at him quick. Nice reds, beautiful fish. Let's get him right out of here. Let's get him right out of here. Get out of here, bud. Get out of here. All right, so we made another move. Uh, fortunately, there is a lot of public access on the East Branch, probably more so than the West Branch, also because it's miles and miles longer, at least the tailwater section. Anyways, we're working through this little island to a, what I believe is a channel over here. Um, we got two trout so far, nothing big, nothing crazy. But honestly, if I could catch one or two more, I think we could safely call it a day. So I'm still using the double nymph. I have a Frenchie on the bottom, and uh, I think it's called a Pertagon. Maybe saying that wrong, don't really care. Um, I have a yellow indicator. I'm using my nine foot five weight fly rod and reel. Um, we probably have, honestly, only like 12 feet of leader and tippet. I probably should have more on here. And we're just floating this little rig right through any slightly deeper riffly water. A lot of the riffles are very shallow and I don't think there's enough holding water for trout. Right in here, we got about a two and a half, three foot hole. So we're just drifting this uh, double nymph rig right through here, hoping for the best, expecting the worst. And hopefully we can smack another trout here very soon. Just got another little fish. Looks like he hit the Frenchie again. Hopefully we can get him over here. Nothing big, probably another six, seven, eight inch. I don't know if it's a wild brown or a wild rainbow, probably a wild brown. He's pulling though in this current for sure. Let's try to get him over here. Got him in this nice little pocket of water on the, on my right. Loving these Frenchies. That's good to know. Oh, don't wanna lose him. Yeah, that's a brown. A little bit bigger than the last one. Nothing crazy. He's fighting hard. He's pulling some drag. Try to get him in the net. All right, we just got a gorgeous, gorgeous wild brown, probably about eight inches. Absolutely stunning red color, so. <coughs> Let's get the hook at him, take a look at him. Got him right over there, that's that's wonderful. Got him on the Frenchie. So unlike the last wild brown, which really didn't have spectacular reds, this fish has absolutely gorgeous red, red colors. So we're gonna get him right out of here. Let's get a quick good look at him. Oh, beautiful, beautiful reds on this fish. Absolutely beautiful fish. Probably about eight, nine inches. Let's get him right out of here. Get out of here, bud. Get out of here. All right, so we keep running and gunning, making our way back down to where the Beaver Kill and the East Branch Delaware meet. Just got to, after some bushwhacking and road walking, we got down to this really nice uh, set of riffles. I think the riffles continue quite a ways up, so this is a great stretch. All right, we just got a fish. Can't tell if it's big or small, but it is a fish nonetheless. Uh, he's a oh. He's a little on the small side. He slapped it though. Another wild brown. Oh! All right, well he popped off. That's that's pretty disappointing, but um, we're at least getting bites in here. So that, that's a start. Just got another little fish. Let's try to hang on to this one, right? Not lose them like a loser. Only losers lose fish. And on this channel, we like to think we're not losers. That sounded stupid, but let's try to get this fish over here. 
He's fighting pretty hard for a little guy. I think he's only like another seven, eight inch fish. Yeah, nice little guy, we'll, we'll take it. Oh, got him, all right. So let's get the hook out of him, take a freaking look at him. I know they grow pretty large here on the uh, east branch, but we got a nice solid seven, eight inch wild brown. We will take it. Love to see the different age classes. Not crazy reds on this fish, but not bad. So let's get him right out of here. Me and my wife just watched uh, Kindergarten Cop. Whew, so many quotable lines. It's not a Toma. That's that's one of them. What else? I'm the potty pooper. That's 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 such a good one. We just watched that Arnold documentary on Netflix, so we were like, let's let's watch an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. And my wife. Pick Kindergarten Cop. Wouldn't have been my first pick. I would have picked, you know, Terminator 2 or Jingle All the Way or something. But, um, yeah, she picked she picked uh, Kindergarten Cop. I never watched it the whole way through. It is quite funny. Honestly, quite funny. Very nostalgically 90s also. So that's, you know, that's just something as I'm here nymphing. In the Catskills, just something I wanted to share that, frankly, you probably don't, you probably don't care. But that's okay. Got another one. Can't tell if it's big or not. I think it's another cookie cutter 7, 8 incher, but who knows? He's tugging a little bit. Nah, I think he's on the small, smaller side. We'll take it though. Putting up a little bit of a fight. Trying to body him over here. Not sure if it's a brown or a rainbow. It's been all brown so far today. No wild bows, but I know they're in here. Fish is putting up a little bit of a fight here. Ooh. All right, so that looks like a, another brown. Not bad. Let's see if we can get him over here. Ah! Oh, oh. Oh, he's he doesn't like this. All right, well, bro, we'll get you out of here. This one looks like it has, oh, much better colors than the last one. A little bit bigger, too. Got him. Oh, got him. All right, yeah, so that's a nice plumper. Nice plump fish, so let's get the freaking hook out of him, take a look at him, and get him right back in the water. All right, so this fish has quite a lot of vigor, and here at Trout Towns, more so than other, you know, shows on YouTube that uh, fish and travel and, and show architecture and history and stuff, we love vigor uh, on this channel, so this fish has a lot of vigor. We're gonna get him right out of here, probably the second best one of the day. Nice fish, real nice. Let's get him right out of here. Beautiful reds, beautiful reds. Let's get him right out of here. Probably about nine incher. Oh, that's that's wonderful. All right, so as we're surrounded by these beautiful Catskills Mountains in, I guess, southeastern New York, that's all we got from the East Branch Delaware River. We did manage to catch, I think, total five or six wild browns. The biggest was maybe 10 or 11 inches. Most were six, seven, eight inches but really nice to see, um, and yeah, that's all we got from here. From all of us here at Trout Town, and by all of us, I sadly just mean myself, we'd like to thank you for watching today's episode. If you have any other Trout Towns you'd like me to visit, please drop me a comment in the comment section of this video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see me visit other Trout Towns across this great country, please consider subscribing to the Traveling Trout Co. channel to give my life meaning. Also, go ahead and tap that like button. Just give it a tap. Trout Town. Brought to you by Traveling Trap Co., a company that's not really a company in any meaningful or significant way. Stay trapped, folks.